As you watch our hearings over the coming weeks, please remember what's at stake. Our democracy remains in danger. The conspiracy to thwart the will of the people is not over. We saw the footage of her body hitting the ground. You know, I'm... I'm Uh, I'm disgusted. Democrats bringing the drama during day one of their made-for-television primetime hearings. Joe Concha is here to break down the performance. And, Joe, speaking of performances, uh, here is some reaction from the media last night. Watch this. The nation's focus returns to the U.S. Capitol as we await the most comprehensive account yet of crimes committed against the United States on this sacred ground. This is going to be theater. The idea is to make this look like a nonpartisan story. They could do the greatest show on earth tonight. Joe, how do you see this? Well, there's a, a number one rule of sales, Carly. Under promise, over you know, over deliver, right? And, and in the first night of the January 1st, uh, 6th, excuse me, primetime hearings, uh, Democrats, along with Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, are under delivering to this point in terms of offering up impactful new information or things we, we failed to hear about to this point 18 months later. It's going to be very interesting to see the ratings tomorrow, you know, because the, the, the Watergate hearings. Uh, for example, in May of 1973, they had enormous audiences. 71% of voters told Gallup at that time they watched the hearings live. I would be shocked if even 5% of the country tunes into these hearings in 2022 because, remember, with Watergate, Richard Nixon was still in office, right? The president in focus here is Donald Trump, and he's been a former president for a year and a half. That matters in terms of public interest in these situations. And I, I think that the hyperbole, the fact that we have a former ABC News president producing these hearings uh, in order to choreograph them to make them more dramatic, that tells me they're trying to sell something. And I think the American people at this point have bigger priorities right now. And, and when you talk about those bigger priorities, Joe, um, I'm assuming that you mean inflation, things like that. Is that why you think yeah. that the, the numbers and the ratings are going to be low? Because they have other things to worry about? Oh, Ashley. Yeah, exactly. I, I think people are much more concerned that inflation is at a 40-year high. So when they go to buy basically anything, it costs infinitely more than it did uh, before this president took office. Gas prices eclipsed $5 a gallon yesterday. They are at an all-time high. Crime is skyrocketing in cities across the country to the point where even DAs in San Francisco are being fired by voters. The U.S. border with Mexico is anything but secure, and fentanyl is coming over in record numbers, and Americans are dying in record numbers as a result. Those are the facts. And this president, this administration, this media can't spin all of that. And, and I think that, you know, the American people are watching this, the ones that are, and saying, where are your priorities right now? I completely and totally support a bipartisan investigation into January right. 6th. So we can find out what happened so it doesn't happen again. Exactly. But this is not a bipartisan commission, and everybody knows it. It most certainly uh, is not. Uh, but you let us in perfectly to what I wanted to ask you here because something really interesting just happened aboard Air Force One recently. Uh, the White House press corps was sitting in their section and then President Biden walks over to them and starts criticizing them about the tone and tenor of their reporting. Apparently, the president is unhappy, Joe, with how the press yeah. is covering his handling of the economy. Yeah, so so uh, the, the president, Joe Biden, Carly, is complaining to the press directly that he's not getting good coverage. Uh, yet the only interview he's done in the past 19, 119 days, if you want to call it an interview, has been with a comedian turned activist in Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, the president thinks his poll numbers are where they are because of poor press coverage uh, and not all those things that we just talked about, the things that people are feeling on the ground. If the president wants better press coverage, Perhaps, maybe, I don't know, sit down with somebody other than a third-place late-night host and take 
hard questions that you actually will be challenged on mm -hmm. instead of complaining like you're the victim. And that's what this administration does best. They're the victim of all the circumstances that we are seeing. With inflation, it's Putin's fault. With the border, it's Trump's fault. With crime, you know, it, it's, it's somebody else's fault besides themselves who can help fix the problem. And nobody likes a complainer, Carly. Yeah, mm. yeah. And, and now to this, Joe, uh, the PGA Tour is suspending some of the world's best golfers. That includes Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson, Sergio Garcia, and others who decided to participate in the Saudi-backed LIV golf series. Here's a statement from the PGA Tour. It says, quote, these players have made their choice for their own financial-based reasons, but they can't demand the same PGA Tour membership benefits, considerations, opportunities, and platform as you. That expectation disrespects you, our fans, and our partners. Your reaction, Joe? It's hard to have sympathy for the richest of the richest 1%. If I were to be an athlete, trust me, I would be a golfer. Every weekend, you're playing somewhere warm, and if it rains, you don't have to go out there. And it, it, here's the thing. The PGA is exactly right in, these situ in this situation, that if you don't want to be a part of our tour, then you can't go play in another one to make a little more money and that the Saudis are running, of all things. So you're not allowed to play with us good for the PGA. You want to go play in that other tour? Good luck. Your relevance goes away. Maybe you make a little more money, but boy, you look bad in the process. Yeah. I'm glad Tiger Woods was smart enough to say, I'm not being any part of this. And he Ashley. turned down a billion dollars <laughs> making that decision. But imagine billion. being that rich to where you could do that. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I mean. Joe, thank you. Happy Friday. Wow, a billion. That's like Carly money, you know? Like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not... Uh, that's I'm right. not going there. It's like I'm Carly kidding. Money. We work Minus hard. Minus all of those zeros, <laughs> <laughs> zeros behind the one. <laughs> Joe, thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.